everyone, it's Jen. Welcome back to my channel and my craft table. Do you have a bunch of these hanging around in your space? I don't know about you, but I certainly do, and they need to be contained. So today's project that I'm gonna share with you is super, super simple. These also make great gifts. So what am I talking about? I'm talking about faux leather cord keepers and these are amazing. So let's go ahead and head down to that craft table and get this project started. The first thing that you will need to do this project is going to be faux leather. Now I purchased this package of faux leather on Amazon and um, I don't remember how much it was, but it was actually very inexpensive from what I remember. And it comes with a huge variety of faux leather patterns, all kinds. Basically, it is literally called a random pack of faux leather, and you just get a huge variety of patterns. Um, today, I'm going to be doing three cord keepers, so I'm going to be using a pink. I'm going to be using a blue, and then I'm going to be using this patterned one. And also, I'm going to be using um, some glitter uh, adhesive. I'm sorry, glitter HTV, not adhesive, but glitter iron on. And we're going to be putting the silver glitter on this one that I just kind of call the fashion pattern. And then we're going to put the pink glitter on the pink faux leather. Now, something that I really like about faux leather is it is inexpensive, it is fun, it is very easy to work with. And on the back side, this is like, um, I would equate it to like a felt, a really um, soft, high quality felt or even almost like a micro suede, but I really do think it's a felt. Um, not real sure to be honest with you, but it just gives the leather a really nice feel on the inside as well. Some other things that you will need are a cutting mat. Now I do not have a strong grip mat for my maker. I just have one for my joy. So I'm going to be using my regular grip mat and some painter's tape just to make sure that the faux leather doesn't shift during the cutting. I will be using my deep point blade. Now that is the one with the black housing. You can use the standard fine tip blade um, for cutting leather. It just will depend on the setting that you choose. I have some scissors, mainly that was to cut the leather already. And then I have my Easy Press Mini for the glitter vinyl. And then I have a small hammer. And then these are snaps. Now I just picked up a very small package of um, snap kit. It comes with this little tool right here that I'll show you how to use and all of the pieces. So I've pulled everything out that we need to make those. Let's head over to Design Space. Now I will link that file down in the description for you along with all of the materials and supplies that are used today. But in Design Space, that link that I'm gonna put in the description for you, I already have everything set up and ready to go. And I wanna share with you like what's in the file so that when you use this file, you can make any adjustments for your particular needs. Okay, let's head over to Design Space. Here in Design Space, I have three circles for you to work with. And the first one is just a round circle, which I got from the shapes menu so i just pulled that out right there and then i sized it at three and a half the next thing i did is i pulled out a little half circle from the shapes down here and this is at also three and a half which then cuts this uh, this direction it cuts it 
in, to 1.75, which is half of the three and a half. And then I have a reminder here for you. So, and I'll explain what these are for. Um, as far as the big circles themselves, you can see where I have already placed um, the little holes for you. I've already attached those. And that's where the Cricut will cut out that tiny little hole where we're gonna insert the snap hardware. So I've already done that on all three of these. Now I am gonna come over here to the pink one. I'm gonna open up that layers panel. So we've got our big circle and then these two little groups, just so you know, okay. Um, as far as these, I'm going to, I did a, um, I did like a size that represented the actual snap and then I put a tiny little hole in the middle of that. So that's what this one is and it's hidden. You don't need that particular piece. And so let me hide those. Okay, and now the pink one looks just like the blue and the purple. Okay, and again, those holes are for the snap hardware and they are already in position. So as far as the half circles, so what I did is in case you want to put some sort of monogram or text like I have here, then I needed to make sure that I was sizing it correctly. So what I did is I created a half circle for each one of these and these will get hidden, okay? These will get hidden before you go to the make screen. And the premise behind them, and I have kind of the directions, I typed it out in a text feature and then I attached it so it's all one thing, but Essentially what we're doing is we, we have a half circle and I'm gonna bring it close to my big circle here. And so the pink scallop and the half circle, I'm gonna show you over here cause I don't wanna mess with the monograms and stuff. So basically what I did is I needed to know how much space I could use for the monogram and so what I did is I created a half circle that would mask off the bottom. And what I did is I just selected both, aligned cent or center horizontally, and then align and aligned bottom. And what this does is it masks off the bottom half. So now I know that I have this amount of space to put a monogram. And you can see where I've done that for the other two. I just will hide these like so when we go to make our little circles. Now, as far as these monograms here, they are not attached. They are just sitting on top for visual purposes only. And these are the custom monograms. And I made these down in the monogram maker down here in the bottom. And I actually, I went to Elegant, and then I put in our initials. So let's just do, okay, we'll just choose three ones. And then I chose the particular look that I was going for. So now it looks like this. And then I did Add to Canvas. So it brings it in just like this, okay? And then what I did is I just had to move it around and get it where I needed it to be for the circle, okay? So I'm actually gonna go ahead and delete that one because I don't need it. And I did not attach it so it, that it will go on a different map because we're using the glitter iron-on. Okay, so really everything that we have here is what needs to go to the make screen. Now, when you open the file in Design Space, these particular monograms that you're looking at right now, those will be deleted. Um, you can use the monogram feature down here to make your own monogram. You could go into Creative Fabrica 
and do a monogram. If I can find a link for that particular feature in Creative Fabrica, I will link that in the description for you just in case you want to use that and not the one in the Cricut Design Space. But essentially we have everything ready to go. So let's go over to the make screen. Now, little disclaimer, you can do this on the Joy with your fine point blade you would need to use more pressure but i'm going to be using my maker 3 today and i'm going to go to the make screen and i'm going to do a little bit of rearranging all i had all different colors going on and then i wanted to show you what happens if you don't attach your monogram so you can see right here that this is my silver monogram and it's really all wonky now so if you get this in your um, make screen, that's just a reminder to go back. And then we're going to click on the monogram and then we're going to hit attach down here in the bottom of the layers panel. Now that monogram will absolutely cut exactly the way you see it. Okay, so you can see my silver glitter monogram is here, which is perfect. Okay, that's matte one. Now I do need to mirror because this is going to be glitter iron on. Okay, the second matte gives me my pink scallop. Perfect. My third matte gives me my other glitter vinyl iron on. So let's move that. I'm going to click those through. Let me show you how I did that. Sorry, I went a little fast. I clicked on the monogram. I went to the three little dots and I went to move. And then I'm going to choose the mat where I want it to go. So I'm going to put it on the same mat as the silver. The reason why I am doing that is because it is really easy for me to put silver glitter over here, pink glitter over here, and have this cut all at one time because both of these are the glitter iron on. So back to our second mat. Now this is going to be our faux leather. This right here, this mat could actually hold all three pieces of leather. So I'm actually going to go find the other two. This third mat will disappear once I start cutting. So now I'm going to take my blue circle and I'm going to click on those three dots and move, put it on my second mat, confirm, and then I'm just going to move it over here into its little corner. And you'll notice how it turned pink. Now I know that the, the just the regular circle is for my husband and he would not appreciate scallops. So I, I know to put the blue in that corner and then the other one down here mat five this is another scallop again three little dots move second mat confirm and both my daughter and i are getting scalloped ones so it, it doesn't matter which faux leather i put in which spot okay i'm just moving them completely out of the way of each other into their own corners now when i go to cut all three of these mats will be um they'll be gone they won't even come into play. Okay, I'm just going to check and make sure that my monograms are mirrored and it looks like they are. Okay, so at this point I would hit continue. Now I'm connected by Bluetooth to my Maker 3. And on this first mat, we're going to be doing uh, not everyday iron-on, I'm going to do glitter iron-on. Okay, and it does give me a warning to make sure that my mirror is turned on and that the iron-on material is face down. That means the shiny side. That way it'll actually cut the vinyl and not the carrier sheet. And I always use more pressure, okay? Now, now that I think about it, yes, uh, I'm gonna use more pressure and it's just gonna ask me for the fine point blade. Now, what I have done in the past, and I really think it was because I wasn't paying attention, is I had left it at default pressure and I had loaded my um, deep point blade prior to the project. 
and it actually cut out fine. It really, it didn't need to be a deep cut. So um, just something to be aware of that I'm gonna do more pressure and I'm gonna use the fine point blade. And then I would load and go. Okay, now on our second mat, we're using the faux leather. So I'm gonna go to browse all materials. And up here in search all materials, I'm going to type the word faux and then I will get these selections, okay? So now the faux leather, I can use this particular material right here with the fine point blade, the standard blade that comes with your Cricut. Now I have done the faux leather paper thin on my Joy with the standard Joy blade, no problem. Okay, so you can do that. You can also do that on your maker, but I want to, let me change this. I actually want to show you if you were to type in leather, you're going to get lots of options. Okay, and I tend, when I'm working with faux leather and I'm using my maker, I tend to do genuine leather. Okay, it seems to work good for me and I don't really have any issues. So I'm going to choose genuine leather, but um, I would say if you're not sure what works for you and your machine, maybe do some tiny test cuts with faux leather paper thin and your standard blade, genuine leather and your deep point blade. If you choose genuine leather, it is going to prompt you to load the deep point blade, okay? And at that, um, I just use the default pressure. I don't do more pressure. Okay, so now that I've talked to you about settings, let's go to the overhead camera and let's get the leather mat ready to go so I can show you how I do that without the strong grip mat. Oh. I don't have a strong grip mat for my maker. I need to get one, but I just haven't done it yet. Um, mainly because every time I've needed one, um, I just ended up using the painter's tape and it worked fine. So um, it is helpful if you're doing like magnetic adhesive magnetic sheets, but essentially I just have some faux leather. Now this particular pink is really, really, really paper thin. Um, this one, the Couture one, this one is a little bit thicker. And this blue one is, um, well, yeah, I mean, this really, this is like paper thin. This is, I would say, paper thin to medium thin. And this definitely requires the genuine leather setting because this is thicker for some reason. Just so be aware of the thicknesses of your leather and that is why I use the deep point blade and then I don't have to worry about it. So remember that I wanted the blue up in this corner here and you'll notice that I put the leather side down and I have that felt suede -ish side facing up toward me and that's because the leather side seems to do a great job sticking to the mat okay and I'm gonna put this one down here so this is where everything was in design space now because I'm using the standard grip mat I am going to take a little bit of painter's tape and I'm just going to um, kind of go over these corners and this is just to help make sure that this doesn't move around and I've had pretty good luck with this particular method um, perhaps one day I will get that strong grip mat I would probably still use the painter's tape even with the strong grip mat because nothing would be worse, at least in my opinion, than to cut your faux leather and have it slide around 
and then the cut is messed up and then your material is wasted. So um, this to me, I guess, you know, I, when I'm a card maker, I over adhese with my little pop dots and foam strips. So when I'm doing faux leather on my Cricut, I err on the side of caution and use the painter's tape. Okay, so this is the faux leather mat. Um, and actually, now that I think about it, I think I'm going to turn the mat around like this. I'm going to cut the faux leather just like this. I'm going to stick this into the machine. But then I'm going to actually, um, I'm going to reposition that glitter, those monograms. And I'm going to have this over here. I've got plenty of real estate. So I can position the mat this way and it'll go through the machine like that, cutting just the glitter over here. And now I've got everything on one mat. So I only have to, you know, put everything down one time. So you want this matte side facing you and you want the shiny side down. Okay. And get that on there. And then I'm going to put the other one here, starting at the three. And that should be good to go. So again, just to recap, I'm going to use one mat total. I have my glitter iron on in this corner. And then this will get cut out. This is the only thing that will cut when I do that particular mat. And that corner doesn't want to stay down. So I'm actually going to, I'm going to help it stay down. Okay. Now when I want to cut my faux leather, I'm going to position the mat this way. And so we'll have the two scallop circles here and the regular blue circle over there. All right. So I'm going to go ahead and send these through my maker machine and I will see you back in just a moment. Okay, my mats are all cut out. And then something that I did forget to mention prior to cutting these is when you cut them before you unload or do anything, lift up a corner of your leather and pull, just see if the cut did well, okay? And so, what I noticed is I did have to do a second um, pass because this blue leather um, was is so thick and I actually had just run it on default pressure and that was not enough. I should have just chose more pressure like I normally do because this is so thick. And then I turned this around and I can feel with my finger that the monogram did great. So let me get these pulled off and then we'll get these put together. Okay, so my Easy Press uh, Mini has been heating up. Now, for video purposes, I am actually just going to walk you through on how to put one together. The other two, I will put them together off camera and then, you know, just show you all of them at the end because the process is gonna be the same no matter what. The couple of things that I did notice on this particular faux leather here, this looked great. Both of the little holes cut out, everything's fantastic. On this one in particular right here, I'm gonna to have to just punch out this little hole because it did not, it didn't go through all the way. Oh, there it is. So that was nice and easy. Just had to punch that out with my weeding tool. So that'll be good and ready to go. And then, okay, so here's the blue leather. And this one, I'm going to punch these out right quick, just like that. Okay, so you can see everything is good to go. All right. So here's how this is going to work. We are going to weed our vinyl really fast.
that's one thing that I like about the monograms is they are quick and easy to weed just like that okay and the carrier sheet of this vinyl um, of the of the iron on vinyl is always so sticky there we go now that won't go anywhere okay so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna decide whether I want it here or here and I think let's see okay so I think this side is better and I am going to fold it and I'm going to place my monogram closer to that fold in the middle and as centered as I can. So this is at one and a half and so I want that I'm sorry this is at three and a half so I want that be at one and three quarters. There we go. Okay, and I'm just going to look and see that it looks like it's level. Okay, perfect. All right, then I'm going to lay this down, and I just have like a little Teflon sheet here, but I'm just using low, okay, my mini press is on low, and I'm just going to go over this. Okay, and then I'm going to pull up the carrier sheet and see if it needs any more. Oh, I think that looks great. Okay, now I am going to just go over this back side a little bit, kind of like I do on my t-shirts. All right, good deal. Okay. So now we're going to take care of our snaps. All right, so this flat one has a little stem, so I need one of those. Then I have like a, like an, it's like, it has a pattern on it, like a little, uh, almost like a pleat looking, and that has a little stem on it. Then we have, like a little disc here. This is, well, it's kind of like a little bowl. All right, that one is gonna go with that piece there. So the little bowl and the flat go together. And then this one that kind of looks like a top hat, all right? Looks kind of like a little top hat. And it's got the like little etching lines on it and that's gonna go with that one. Okay, so here's how this works. I'm going to put this through that hole right there. Okay, and wow, did I, look, if you know, you know, I got that barely there. Okay, and then I'm going to put this little bowl on top of that stem, just like so. And I'm only gonna do this on camera once. I'm gonna leave it on my pressing mat so I don't break my glass mat. But essentially, I take this little, the little point, I put it right there. Okay, so it's on this little disc. Everything is there. And that little pointy end goes in the hole of the stem and then I'm just gonna hit it with my hammer, okay? So, just like that. And I'm gonna do this really quick because it's very, very loud. And then I'll come back. Okay, and so what it does is it kind of flattens out that stem and secures it to that little bowl. And so there is our one of our snaps. And then I'm gonna do the same thing with this one. I'm going to just put that stem through the hole that the Cricut made for us. 
I'm going to put that little top hat looking piece on the stem just like that. Okay, and then I'm going to go and hit that for you. Okay, so this is now finished. Okay, so I've got my monogram on the top half. I've got snaps on both sides. And then let me just show you how this works. So I'm going to grab my cord. Okay. I guess I don't need to wind it that tight. Okay. So I grab my cord and I just stick this through. Well, let me do this not so tightly. Okay, that's better. All right, so I just put it through like that. Okay, and then I can snap it together. And this is my little cord keeper. So one, my family will know that A, it belongs to me and, you know, not someone else. And then two, now my cord is nice and secure. So that's how this looks. Okay, so I'm gonna go ahead and do the other two off camera so to save time for you and then I will come back and we'll reveal all three. Okay, I'm back and I have everything finished. So when I left off last time, this was the cord keeper that we had made just a little while ago. So um, this one here is for me in particular and a um, couple of things that I want to share with you about this project. First of all, in Design Space, I have moved down the um, I've moved down the holes that these little posts go through so that I could get them further away from the edge. Okay, so you know, for me personally, I'm gonna let this go. I I really don't want to. Um, you know, toss this out. It's it's very functional. It's just that the snap is a little too close to the edge. So I moved it down in design space so that when you open the file, you don't need to worry about that. Okay. So, and then you can see where I have the snap here. All right. Nice and good. Another thing about this project is I have three different cords here. Okay, so this is the one that I made for my daughter, and I had this cord on here earlier, and I tried this cord on here, and um, what I noticed is that if you have a really, like this is a very thin cord, and this is a very thick cord, so if your cord is really, really thick, or it's really long, then you probably want to size um, you want to size these up to maybe four or three and, you know, three and three quarters because they're currently three and a half. Um, three and a half is okay, but maybe size them up to three and three quarters. But you will need to make sure that the little hole that is in there is still at a, um, just an eighth of an inch, which is 0.125. So this was the one that I made for my daughter and it just really turned out really nice. Now, there is a disclaimer for that. <laughs> so I made hers a little while ago and I went out and, you know, I went to go bang the snaps. Well, it was really, really windy and I was getting distracted. So I, this side worked fine, and then this one I put on upside down. So this should actually, I'll show you here, it needs to look like, it needs to look like that, and yet I had it upside down. So 
This one will be going in the toss bin, which is fine. Um, just be mindful with your snaps. Otherwise, you're gonna make the same mistake I did, which, you know, crafting is always a learning experience. So, I just got distracted and wasn't paying attention to what I was doing, and this is the result of having to do it again. All right, and then this was just the plain one. Now, this one is for my husband, and it's just plain, and um, I did move the circles that were cut by the Cricut. I just went down a little below them and used my weeding tool to poke out a new hole. Um, but in design space, I have moved all of these holes, you know, more toward the center of the circle so that you don't have to worry about that. Just be mindful that if you resize these bigger, that you do need to have that tiny little hole um, you will click on that one element in the layers panel and just make sure that it is still sized at 0.125. Okay, well this is all for today's craft. I really hope that I was able to share something that was not only uh, inspiring and um, fun, but also functional for you. These make great gifts and who doesn't love a way to keep their cords nice and tidy when they're not using them? Um, so you could make some for everyone in your family or friends group. You could monogram them or not. You could make them scalloped or not. And they're just really simple. And this is a great scrap buster, not just for the vinyl, but for the faux This really doesn't take hardly any material at all. This is a great scrap buster. Um, as far as the tool, you can always get this online, Amazon. I'll put a link down in the description for you. Um, I know that they, you can even get them at Michael's, probably Hobby Lobby. I don't know if you can get them at Walmart, but you could probably check on that. But anyway, this is all for today's video. Don't forget that if this was in helpful in any way to hit that like button and share this with your crafty friends. If you're not already a subscriber, I would love to have you on board in this journey. And don't forget to hit that subscribe button and that notification bell so that you'll always know when new content is posted. So in the meantime, until I see you in the next video, Enjoy the remaining of your summer days, and as always, happy crafting. Thank you all so much for watching today. I'm so glad that you can join me at my craft table. If you're not already, I'd love to have you as a subscriber, and don't forget to hit that notification bell. That way you'll know when new videos arrive. Have a great day, and as always, happy crafting.